Thank you for all the beverages <laughs> um, and the fruit. It's been wonderful talking with you. And this was probably the deepest exploration of the office and my experience on it that I've ever done. Ever done. Ever done. Oh, shit. You're going to run all that equipment by yourself? That's how I do it. That's do you the have any cameras in here? Uh, I'll send you for approval about the bathroom cams. Okay. Rain, do you want room temp or uh Hold on, give me a second here. Okay. God damn. Okay, you just have to go. All right. Um you're gonna be on the couch. Okay. And um, I have room temp, I have cold, I also have some organic lemonade, and I have another thing of berries and uh, and um pineapple if you'd like. I will take some motherfucking berries and a lukewarm water. How's that sound? As long as you don't chew into the microphone, it sounds like we're gonna have a night. Okay. I was thinking about opening a fan store called Only Fans. Just fans. Ceiling fans, table fans. You're okay, that's in plastic? Uh, I love, I lo please, yes, thank you, thank you. Oh, how Do you have anything, like smaller, the smaller plastic ones? I was smaller. Like the, the, the eight ounce? It's okay, no, never mind, never mind, this is fine. And how rude of me. I know this is a little tacky, considering your pedigree, but I have two options of beets. We have organic, and we have non-organic with ginger. Hey, uh, Emilio, get a shot of me going like this, and then shaking my head, and then uh, pan in, zoom in on the beats. We can get started, dude. I would love to, to really, I'd love to get started. All right. I'd love to get started. I love all this... This is fun. Clarity and jocularity. Don't know what that word means. All right, I'll be back in like five minutes. All right, cool. I'll be right here. Um, all right, good to go. You finished all your fruit? Yeah. Do you want yeah, some more? I did. No, I'm really good. Okay. Yeah. Theme music? Do you want me to talk into this? Yeah. Theme music. Scoot doo. Blabbity blue. Scoot dee. Oh yeah! Hello? Hi, Rick. Hey. You hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you just great. Yeah. So I don't have to yell? You don't have to yell. Okay. So on your way over here, it's nighttime because you're busy. What were you doing? I wasn't doing anything. Why did we have to start this late? We didn't. I was free all afternoon. I was waiting for to meet you at 7.30 tonight. Yeah, because uh, your people requested... Rain doesn't like to uh, perform uh, until the sun is down. Oh. Well, <laughs> I am used to performing around noon one-ish. I know. This is really throwing you off. Turn this a little bit so it's... Um... No. <laughs> no. You, no. No. Leave it. <laughs> no. I want to have imperfect sound, and I want <laughs> this blocking my face. Oh, boy. All right hot so what? on your way over here uh, yeah. normally it, in the daytime i have more energy and i had work today i did physical therapy today i did some other stuff today what are you getting physical therapy on your penis at a massage parlor okay, bleep that both of those things no keep no. those in bleep them keep them in you were getting your penis Jean massaged. Mark, keep them at a massage you were getting your penis massaged you were wow Wow, you came prepared. You know, it's nice. funny that you say that because that's beats, what happened. You, you brought me beets in the pre-roll and uh, that's what she said. Did you what? know that I had those beets before I knew you were coming over? I did not know that. Did you know that? Are they old beets? Those are very old beets. No, actually, these are uh, uh, Phillips. But oh, I do good, have some good, in, the, in, in, in the closet if you want yeah. to try them. They're just tighter on the ears. Yeah, no, I like the Phillips. That's fine. And this was uh, gifted to me and it's been here for like a year. Wow. Coincidentally. Okay, how about that? That's, That's and this, this I just <clears throat> picked up on my own. Oh, really? At Barnes & Noble? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So the reason I bring this up is because, oh, it's nighttime. I don't do nighttime too much. Typically, I only do a nighttime podcast when I get stoned. Okay. And I, can we talk about this? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so I messaged you, you know. Good. And you, I think you were getting jerked did off you at study, the massage parlor. I was. Did you get, did you study mime? I did. I went to clown college. Yeah. Kent State. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Right. relax, relax. Right. Okay. I was going to say Rutgers. Oh. oh, that's where Scooby-Doo went, right? To Rutgers? Oh, no, he went to rut row. <laughs> Thank you. This episode is sponsored by The Freeze Pipe. For our favorite way to light up, go to Freeze Cop... For our favorite way to light up, go to thefreezepipe.com today. And enjoy some awesome deals going on from now to April 20th. We're talking pipes, bubblers, bongs, and dab rigs. Vape pens and joint chillers. No matter what your style, there's a chilling... I'm sorry, what was the, the chili? There's a chili freeze pipe for you. This is like barbecue. Just say there's a chili freeze pipe for you. Chili is in cold, not barbecue. Oh, not the barbecue one. Okay. Say it again. <laughs> There's a chili freeze pipe for you. <laughs> Shop now at thefreezepipe.com. And if you see something that's not on sale, use code TISO for 10% off your total order. That's, that's the thefreezepipe.com. And use code, code TISO for 10% off. This episode is sponsored by Helix Sleep, the ultimate wake and bake mattress. Are you guys a little stoned? A little bit. A little bit. I drank a lot of orange juice, and that makes me slur. <laughs> Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for all of our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet. It will not last long. With, With Helix, Helix, better sleep, sleep starts, starts now. now. But the... Uh, mm. I wanted to get a little stoned, and I, I, I reached out to you because we had only met once when I did your podcast, yes. Soul Boom, on all audio platforms now as well as YouTube. Link in description. And you said, why don't you, you're here. I am. Hi. Yeah, so you said, uh, hey, man, uh, what time are you getting here exactly? Because I want to I want to uh, time this out. I want to take a little edible, and I want it to kick in about halfway through our interview. And that was one of the oddest texts I've ever gotten, really. And um, I was like, okay, well, listen, if it was up to me, I would say I prefer to, you know, have you without any intoxicants, but you do you, baby, if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. That's the weirdest text you've ever got. One of the weirdest texts? One of the weirdest texts is like, hey, come over to my house and do my podcast. Let me know exactly when you're landing so that I can time out my edible consumption. Right. Is a, That's up there. It's up there. I wanted to make sure. I got a weird text. I got a different weird text today. Can I read it to you? Of course. Do you get random texts from? Yes, don't respond to them. I'll tell you why. No, but this is this is a little different. I'm not going to respond, and I want to know why. Uh, oh, come on. Can we trim this out? Um, people like this. People like when people search for stuff for the phone. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. Do we have this, fun upbeat music this going morning. during this. Okay, we're going to trim a lot of this out. Just you interject yourself. What's going on here? How, I didn't delete it. Okay, this is crazy. I got it this morning. What? I can't believe it. This makes no sense. I couldn't find it. But someone thought that I was their veterinarian and they said, hey, Marvin, I just want to know what to do about the dog. Like, it doesn't seem to be taking his medication. He had diarrhea last night. You know, should I bring him in or something like that? And you I thought me wanting an edible was weirder than that? I did think that was a lot weirder than that. Yeah. But I can't find it. So they do specific things like that on purpose to, to get you to be to, engaged. Yes. And then once you write back, they know... Oh, this is an active number. This is somebody. Right. So they put it on a list or something like that. I don't know all yeah. the ins and outs. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I used to engage to like write back as if I were the people that they were looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a fun, it's a fun little gag. Yeah. Yeah. I think Michael Sarah did that once as an extended gag. You can find it if you Google that. And someone Google. texted him. It's a search engine. Yes. And they, um, uh, 
and he got into a dialogue and actually made friends with a stranger that accidentally texted him. And there was a very long, uh, extended correspondence between the two. It was very funny. This was about 10 years ago. To the very, day? Very, very funny. I said about, right? Did you hear me say about 10 years ago? No, c cut back to it. It was 10 years ago. I really don't think you said it about. I really did say that. I really did. Cut back. It was exactly 10 years ago. All right. I may, I might be, <laughs> I might be remembering it wrong. <laughs> um, so How is this going so far? So anyways, you, <laughs> you texted me and yeah, so I was honest with you and then of you course. were, you were great. You were just like, oh, that's cool. I, I get that. Um, but can you explain a little further? And then I was like, well, it's kind of like when you go out with friends and they have like more than one drink and you're out with your friends and they all start to get like sloshy. Right. And you're not really experiencing your friends because they're like, they're a little too garrulous and they've had one too many. And like, ah! They laugh too easily. Right. And you're like, and me being, I'm sober. So being with them, just not as fun. I, no judgment. It's it's fine. You know, I understand. I, I used to get fucked up a lot. No judgment, but not as just not as pleasant. Right. So I was picturing, I don't know what you're like when you get a buzz on from that edible, but I pictured us halfway through the podcast and you just been like being, you right. know, and seeing leprechauns. And is that what happens when you take edibles? Mm hmm. Yeah, see, this is the fun stuff that you get to see when you're high. Right. So you should I've been trying. Get, get a water I'm brand trying. to sponsor your show. And because right now you've got three different kinds of water. Mm -hmm. You could be cashing in. You know what I've act actively, the only thing I've been actively trying to get to sponsor for mm. a long time, and they mm. they haven't, they won't. Mm. They gave me a hundred dollar gift certificate and I used it. What's that? I'll let you guess. Uh liquid death water. Nope. Uh, Bomba socks. Yep. Bomba. Yeah, they gave you, that's all they did is a hundred. Those cheap bastards. I'm wearing. I was giving them out to people. They're my favorite yeah. sock. I have a funny thing about a certificate. Once in the early days of Twitter, I tweeted something, just a silly little. It wasn't even like a joke, just a comment about Chipotle. <laughs> and then a week later, in the mail, I got congratulations. You've received a Chipotle black card. I'm not making this up. And it was unlimited Chipotle and it was a card and I could go into Chipotle at any time and I would order even for multiple people. I didn't, I didn't know what the limit is. I used this Chipotle black card. I'm not kidding you for six years of free Chipotle and I love Chipotle and I was eating there all the time on this free card. And then one day it just stopped working and they're like, this isn't working. I have a feeling you're about to get another Chipotle card. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, but I'm so, I'm incredibly rich, okay? Because right. I was on a TV show for so long and it, it the list goes on and on, but I'm a cheap bastard, right. so I would always go eat a Chipotle. And yes, I'd take the fucking guacamole. Do you, do you think Chipotle's good? Because can I tell you what I think they are? Yeah. I think they're de bomb, but socks are the most comfortable. And this is a not, this is a, this is a take your shoes off show. I mean, I could be wearing anything. Yeah. I'm choosing to wear these. Yeah. You know, they get holes in them sometimes. You could take a picture, send it to them. They send you new socks back. Are you kidding me? No. I had no idea because this I This is right up your alley. I get holes in my Bombas all the time. That's the thing. My dad and I talk about all the time. We yeah. love them. They get holes in them. Yeah. We love them so much. We deal with that. You deal with that. Yeah. And my dad goes, well, how do I send it back? They need the receipt. I go, just search your email for Bombas. Yeah. Find the receipt. Take the picture. They send you. Like if there's holes in, in four of them, yeah. they'll send you whatever you ordered. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. That's great to know. That sounds like you have a really intimate relationship with your dad that you're able to talk about socks like that. Oh my God, which reminds me. I told my dad that you were going to be on here. Yeah, let's call and him. he's in Cleveland. Let's call him. Yeah, he's still awake. He said, because he said, and I forgot to tell him. Do you want me to call him? I've got his number. I'll call him. He texted me this morning. I couldn't find the text. I'll call Something him. about a veterinarian. <laughs> Keep it in. Oh, thanks. Come on. Come on, Dad. Pick up, pick up. What's his name? Steve. Steve Glassman? Talk about how much you love his rugs. Come on. Like his oh. hair, on his hair? Oh, he's got a mane on him. No, but um, he's, uh, 
a rug salesman. He he's not doing as well as he could because at Marshall Rug Gallery, for whatever reason, they don't have any customers now. Just Let's family. See. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll find thousands of choices, including carpet, hardwood, rugs, and luxury vinyl. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered! Hey, Steve. Hi. Hi, Steve. How are you? It's Rain Wilson. <laughs> wow, I got a laugh just by saying my name. That's impressive. Yes, very much so. <laughs> I can hear. He's got wet mouth. What are you eating, Dad? I'm nothing. I was sleeping. Okay. Oh, oh, you're just kind of like smacking a, a dry mouth. Yeah, I watched about 74 episodes of The Office, and then we went to bed. Oh. Dad, what's, my, what's your ringtone when I call? theme song to the office i know it's you all the time it's my favorite ringtone this is cool your yes. dad's ringtone for you I is the office i theme. turned him on to the office and he loves it oh so now he thinks of me with the That's office so sweet steve do you watch your son's shows of course i do okay even nope. the dramas yes. no one else does <laughs> okay, you're just Steve. laughing because you know him. That's not. You're just laughing because you're a fan. That's. <laughs> no, that um, was funny. Even if I wasn't a fan, Steve, whatever. how's the how's the rug business going? Very, very good. We're having a nice season. Oh, good. Now, what season yes. is it? Are you talking about the winter? Is winter big for buying rugs? Oh, rain, Dad, tell him. How does it's that work? The, it's the winter buying season. That's okay. correct. Because because why? Why is that? People are spending so much time at home, they're realizing and they're getting inspired to make it look nice. So people don't really buy rugs in like July? No. Yes, but more people buy them in the winter months because they're inside and want to spruce up their home a little bit. And Keep in uh, mind, this is Ohio, so it's cold. People are in. Yeah, well, no, I, I get that. And we're thinking about opening up a second store in Scranton. <laughs> okay. This um, is at the office. And, and Steve, that's not actually happening, but... Um, well, we don't need it. people. We no, I want to know. No, in fact, I think I want to edit the question out for. I'm not even joking. We're editing that out. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, take that out. <laughs> stop! stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Oh, oh my dude. God. I love the Glassmans. Oh my God. <laughs> I might put that on Patreon. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Hey, uh, Steve, you go to bed pretty early. It's like uh, 10, 10 30 over there. Yeah. 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 11. Well, yeah. I worked a hard day today, Rain, and yeah. I'm tired. What's you your favorite office episode, Steve? Wait, hold on. Let me tell you what he did. He, he woke up at 4 a.m. to take my uncle to have shoulder surgery, and boy, oh. is his arm tired. And then he went to work. Oh, my wow. favorite episode, I don't know the name of it, but it's the one where uh, they uh, uh, hide your desk in the bathroom. I love that one. Yeah, that's a great uh, prank. That's a great cold open prank. I don't remember what happened Season in the two, rest of the episode. Season two, episode six. Oh, that was right. That's right. That's exactly <laughs> right. That's Rain, impressive. Just be proud, just wow. be proud that you were one of the anchors of the funniest shows ever, and I'm proud to talk to oh, you. Oh, Dad, listen to this. But, so Rain but, has a lot of money, okay, obviously. And he's talking obviously. about how much he has so much money, but he's cheap. He tweeted something out let's say 2011. Good guess. Thank you. Early days of Twitter. And he right. mentioned something about Chipotle. Chipotle sent him a black card. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I had to sneeze. <laughs> and then he was had unlimited Chipotle for six years. He went all the time. He was buying it for other people. He just, as many- Unlimited as Chipotle. Anytime I'm he driving down the road, hungry, there's a Chipotle, let's go. I he even went, Steve- off getting 10 shares of Chipotle stock. He ain't lying from back right. then. Wow. Yeah, so it's for 2200 Straight up. these days. Right. Steve, I even ate at Chipotle during the lean years, the bad years, the, the bacterial filled <laughs> oh, years. When they had the, uh, Do you remember all the bacterial infections? People were getting like sores on their feet. Yeah. What was they it? Were it was in the lettuce. In, it was in the lettuce. What's right. the one that yeah. makes you poop? Like, and, and like, Giardia. Poop? Giardia. LaGuardia. 
LaGuardia. Yeah. No, it's a thing. Yeah, they, that was a LaGuardia infection. It ran through all the Chipotles. Yeah. Brought it up from Mexico. But on pretty the cool, right, Dad? Man yeah. Knows his stuff. He was about to get another black card until he brought that up. <laughs> I, I can live with that. I don't think he needs any more black cards. I don't. All right, Dad, is there anything you want to plug? Yeah, one other thing. Hey, Rain. Yeah, Steve, when's your podcast coming out? He's, uh, he's on this all the time. doesn't come out, but I'm going to give you a plug, too. And, and I forgot the name of it, but you played a drummer in a movie that takes place in Cleveland. Of, uh, of music. Yeah, I forgot it. it takes place in Cleveland. Yeah, that's right. Yes. and It's called The Rocker, the Steve. It's yes. called The Rocker, yeah. The best. I love the movie. Oh, you're so kind. Not, not a whole lot of people know it. You were great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I loved it. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Steve, it's a pleasure. I hope to see you one day in person for I real. I hope so too, yeah. Ray. Have a great time. Right. Okay. Good night, Daddy. Love Talk you. to you guys. Bye. Go to bed. Good night. Um, uh, that was cool. That was really cool. Yeah. We watched so much Office. I wish we could call my dad, but he's dead. Well, We'll we, cut that out. <laughs> well, uh, we, we do animation. <laughs> I'll send you for approval. And you got to send me a picture for likeness. <laughs> but Tom, thank you. Uh, so I want to fill my water. And then uh, I want to um, see if you want to get have some booze. or. Yeah, I'd love that. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. So on the topic of uh, not liking to be around people who are drinking or, or high, I want to talk about that for a second. Wait, do we want to finish that conversation? We didn't really finish it. I know, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, it. so it's, you know, it's like you're not getting the person at their maximum. We're rolling. They, t they turn off sometimes, I compulsively check. Um, yeah, you're just not getting the person uh, at, their, at their best necessarily, you know? So and I not, was- Not arguing it, I explain was what best means. Well- uh, most present, let's say. Okay. And I don't necessarily agree, but... Do you think you can be more present from an edible or from like a couple of shots? Do you want to go on or should I t t answer that? You can go ahead. With Now, this is obviously, this goes without saying, but I yeah. love to say what goes without saying. This is just me and my um, observations through my awareness and, and uh, yeah, yeah. what I'm attracted to in me and the way I feel. Drinking, I do not like. Okay. Um, even one drink. I've had sips. If maybe I will, I don't know. Yeah. It does do something to where, like, if you're nervous, I guess, like, and the pros and cons, I could see how it, 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 you're, it, it, the, what is it? Not inhibits you, but the other one. Uh, you're not as inhibited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like freeze it. you up. Yeah. I don't feel like I'm in control. Um, I don't feel like me. I just feel like uh, numbed. I, weed a lot of the time for me. When I take it, and I don't get, I mean, I do like to get really high, but usually I'll, I'll have like two and a half milligrams. I guess people will call that a micro dose. I, I'm so present because like right now I'm okay, but sometimes I could be talking to somebody, especially if it's a podcast or something, and I catch myself thinking about something mm -hmm. that you're not saying, mm -hmm. something I want to do, something I didn't want to do. I'm uncomfortable. I'm not expressing myself. Mm -hmm. And when I'm that way, the only way I could feel present is if I'm saying whatever I'm thinking. That becomes self-indulgent. It's over-communicating, and it could disrupt the momentum. Pick and choose, pick and choose, but sometimes. Okay. When I'm high, a lot of the time, it's very easy. You know how food tastes better on weed, or at least you've heard this? Okay. Have you done not? Uh, yeah, I, I, used to, I used to smoke, yeah. Do you not remember? I don't remember anything about food, about it in, with food, yeah. Oh, nothing. okay. Yeah. Well, everyone is gasping at home right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Food tastes better. Things are funnier. I remember. I remember getting the munchies, that old, you know, chestnut. But yeah, mm -hmm. I don't well, remember it tasting better. Oh, you eat a, even a chestnut. If I were to eat, I'd be like, "Why am I eating not eating chestnuts all the time?" It just tastes so good. There's a different sense, not for better or worse, of appreciation for certain things. To where, even if I'm nervous or in my head or whatever, I'm so interested in whatever's happening. But that, but I would take that as a fake interest. If like all of a sudden we were talking and then you were just like really, really oh. interested. That's fair. I, I would I would wonder like, is this Rick really being interested or is he being hyper intense because of the pot? Right. So if it's not something that I could be interested in, I wouldn't be interested. 
But if it is something I would be interested in, it's it's more interesting than being in my head. So it supersedes it. I, it's chemical, sure, but it's organic. Think of it like um, if I have oxytocin going through my body in a certain moment or mm-hmm. if I just worked out or whatever it is, if if I have PMS, you know, yeah. like there are different chemicals and hormones going through our body at any time that make us and prioritize our emotions and our feelings. Okay. Weed is a cheat. I, I agree it's a cheat, but it's a cheat that works. And to me, the only disadvantage I've ever found from it is I assuming I'm not getting hot, like crazy high in an inappropriate place, is I'm just eating way too many things I wouldn't have wanted to have eaten. Like chestnuts. There, have you ever had a chestnut high? I haven't had a chestnut high. I've never, I've never smoked a chestnut. But it's interesting, you know, you go into some of these weed stores and they have ones like, oh, this will help you sleep better and this will give you more energy and this, they should have podcasting weed. It sounds like that's what you're describing. Like that sounds like the perfect drug. For a podcaster. Not bad branding. I will say that a lot of people that like to smoke weed, um, most of them that I've talked to don't like performing high. When they're high, they if they're in a position like yeah, that, they'll yeah. get paranoid or yeah. they'll st- st- stammer on their words. It slows them down. Right. Some people, myself yeah. included, I don't do it all the time, but I like if like if I've done if doing shows all week and I'm not in the mood or I'm yeah. special I love to get high in Are you stage. do you have ADD or ADHD? I was diagnosed with it as a kid, but I was diagnosed with so many things. Because you know that when you take like an Adderall, a normal person takes an Adderall and they're like, it's literally speed. But someone with ADD takes it and it it actually kind of like, I won't say it slows them down, but kind of focuses Focuses thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've had it before. It focused me, but it also made me feel like so happy. And it felt like a, it felt like a, that felt fake. It felt to druggy. Me. Yeah. It feels a little druggy. And yeah. it felt like I could see why people would like this. Yeah. But it, I didn't feel like me. Yeah. Yeah. Weed I is the it. only drug. Even caffeine, sometimes I get too excited. This episode brought to you by Kiva Chocolates. Weed. Also, I said this to you. We've only met twice now. Yeah. I was on your podcast, which yeah. I believe will be coming out sometime but I, in the I next like couple months. I like you a lot. Thanks. I'm a big, big fan. I'm going to I'm going to uh milk this and and ask you to tell me why you said that. Um you have a genuine voice. You're authentic to who you are. You're not putting on anything for anyone. You're a natural performer and naturally funny and quick-witted, but you're not yeah, you're not um it's not a, it's not an act. With some comedians who are like, "Hey, I'm the qu- I'm the quick guy and the quirky thing and I'm doing the thing." It's a little bit put on. It really right. is it's an expression, an extension of who you are. It's an authentic voice and you're not afraid to to be to be vulnerable. And I, I like that about well, you. Well, thank you. Yeah. I and you're easy on the eyes. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just got to us fucking each other on the ottoman. <laughs> Used to do that kind of stuff, but YouTube censored it. I wanted to get and if it's not, do you have now, any questions for me or anything? Yeah. Okay. Do you want some weed? No. We can get into the question part a, of it. So, can I tell you my weed story? How long is it? I could do a four, four and a half minute version, four minute version. Okay. Now I don't want to. I I, let me. I feel like I want a little encouragement. How much of I don't want to was the joke, and how much was inspired by truth? Because I know that there's a mix there. Um, three quarters joke, one quarter truth. Really? Yeah. I would have thought a little more truth. Yeah. I would have thought 30%. I never bring more than a quarter truth to anything I do. Good merch. Do you have a weed story by chance? <laughs> I, as a matter of fact, I do. Back when I was living in New York in my 20s and my, during my drug years, um, I was smoking weed. My, my friend and I were living in, uh, we were squatting essentially in an abandoned beer brewery um, in Brooklyn. And- Oh, the, the triple B? I, yes and no. So the I just saw you for the first time get mad at me. <laughs> I just saw you get mad at me. I could see how we would fight and I know how it would go. You'd be passive aggressive. I'm not passive aggressive. I'm just aggressive. Okay. 
I'd be like, man, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, I could see that too. Um, so <laughs> the uh, we were living in this place, no heat for a while, no running, no shower. Um, I would go to friends' houses with a towel and I'd be like, hey, just stopping by. How's it going? Oh, hey, can I use your shower? But really my ulterior motive, my passive aggressive motive was to take a shower at their house. So we lived in this place. It was crazy. There were rats running around. These are just other friends of yours that moved to New York with you? Yeah, other friends that were living in New York that I'd gone to acting school with or that I'd met from doing theater. How old are you? 24. And um, uh, it was Christmas morning and I woke up and I waked and baked. And my roommate had smoked the same pot. So I don't think it was like laced, but whatever it is, I had a really bad reaction. It was it was probably 15 degrees outside Christmas morning and I started to have like a bad trip from pot. I don't understand it, but I really had a bad trip. Like my, my muscles were like contracting in my arms and I was like hyperventilating. I started to sweat and I really thought that I was having a, a, I don't know what it was, a heart attack or something. And I was like, my friend was on the phone down below and I was up in this room up above in this big kind of loft area and we had these candles lit. He was my roommate. And candles for heat or for light? Pardon just the just for light and, and, dec and decor and ambiance in this weird place. And they were glass and I started throwing them at him. And they were shattering, and then some. They caught these this pile of newspapers and magazines on fire. I'm not really not making this up. Any of this, and it was a very dark and strange time in my life. And uh, he's like on the phone. He's like, I gotta go. And then he came up, and I was like, I feel like I'm dying. I'm dying. And I was like, and I was like shivering. And I that's when I saw the face of God. It was a true, totally true story. I had a vision that was kind of like a Mark Rothko painting. Put up a picture. Can we put that in? And then it was this just vast horizon uh, and with sun, with a sunlight and uh, really beautiful, beautiful colors. And I was like, so it wasn't a face. It wasn't, it wasn't eyes and ears, but I was like, this is the face of God. And then to the face of God, I was like, I'm never gonna smoke pot again. I said to the face of God. And then my friend, as I started to come down and calm down, he had uh, Raise High the Roof Beam Carpenters by J.D. Salinger, and he was reading it to me. And uh, That's the guy that went into a cabin for a while? Yeah. And uh, and then I came down. So it was the weirdest thing, but I haven't smoked pot since. Probably a good thing for me. I don't know what, hmm. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> yeah, it could have been laced with something. But my friend smoked the same joint. Maybe he's joint. used to whatever that is it was laced with. Yeah, I don't know. That's wild, man. So yeah, that's that's my my time is done with it. Is there a superstitious aspect of that where you're like, ah, I said I won't, it's been so long, so I won't? Or is it just you truly have no desire? Well, I got sober also from alcohol. So I'm like, you know, I just better just stay sober. How long have you been sober? Uh, I have been sober over 20 years. Yeah, yeah, 25 years. That's, that's uh, what was the inciting incident to that? Were you working before you got sober? I reversed engineered my sobriety. So I quit drinking because I just felt like it was fucking up my life and I was making terrible choices. So I, let's, as they say in AA, I white knuckled it. And then I was even more miserable in a whole bunch of other ways. So I started therapy and then I told him about the drinking thing. He's like, well, you're, you're an alcoholic. You need to go replace the lack of drinking with AA meetings. So I started going to AA meetings. And at the time I hadn't drank in like a year and a half. So it kind of, it kind of reversed engineered. What do you think going to AA did for you, even though you were a year and a half in? I needed a uh, direction. Um, and you know, what, what drinking does, what any drug does is, you know, other than the podcasting pot, the, uh, you know, it, it, it fills something in us, I believe. And, um, that's that's missing. And if you if you just shut it off, if you just stop it, you'll often just fill that void with something else to fill the void. You know, just speaking a, on addiction. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So y you might quit drinking and start using porn all the time, or you might quit, 
you know, pot or a Coke and start shopping all the time or something like that. Like you could fill it with un other unhealthy behaviors. So you have to fill it with something positive. So AA gives you community, gives you connection. It gives you meaning and gives you like something to do, a way of kind of focusing and harnessing your life, which I kind of needed at the time too. So I just learned a lot from, uh, and, and continue to learn a lot from 12 Steps. When were you born? Seattle. When? 1966. 66. So was that your 35 when you quit? Um, yeah. No. That was 90. It was 98. Well, that's 28 plus four. It's 32. Yeah. You're 32 when you quit. That's before the office. Yeah. How old were you when you, when you did the pilot? 34. There's something about 36, when 37. I <laughs> I honestly, I can't know. I'm so old. I can't, I'm not, I, when you're 27, like you, you can 26. really keep track of like right. when years are. Now it's like, it's all a haze. It's 90s, early 2000s. I don't remember. Um, do you think there's some, uh, uh, as far as relatively healthy addictions, uh, minor bits, I'm addicted to bits. Okay. Uh, do you think that's okay? Like the triple B brewery bit that you were doing? Cut back. We were squatting essentially in an abandoned beer brewery um, in Brooklyn. And, oh, the, the triple B? This episode is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Dad, do you have a Helix Sleep mattress? I have two Helix Sleep mattresses and I love them. Teddy, do you have a Helix Sleep mattress? I got, I got the, the uh, discount. Mm -hmm. I love it. Not only will they deliver it to your door, they deliver it in a box where you could just carry it in so easily. And you could try this mattress for up to five nights for free. And if you don't like it, you could send it back. You know what? I'm speaking out of turn. It's not five nights. It's a hundred nights. hundred nights. Oh. You can sleep on it for over three months. Do whatever you want to do on the mattress. Turn, sleep, <laughs> knit. Here's my challenge to you. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso, Okay. Jerk off on this mattress every night for three months. Return it for free. What do you have to lose? Wow. Except a little jism. <laughs> <laughs> Helix is offering 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso and use code HELIXPARTNER20. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. They're with a Helix, great mattress. Best with Helix, offer yet won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts meow. Who's little baby? <laughs> so the great people of the freeze pipe send us some samples because we can show them to you and maybe use them. Okay. It's like Christmas. Let's open them up. To be honest with you, I consider myself the unofficial spokesperson for the freeze pipe because I use it so often. And I've created Whoa, a model this. for the freeze pipe. Smooth hit, no cough. They, this what kind of job they do on this thing. This is the freeze pipe mini ball. You put this in the freezer and get it nice and cold. You put your flour in the bowl. Remove your freeze pipe apparatus from the freezer. That needs to be in the freezer for about an hour. Insert it in, light it, pull the bowl out, and you finish the smoothest hit in the world. And when you're a partier, you go to the Beaker, Beaker Bong Ultimate. That's like the Breaking Bad set. Dad, while you're opening it up, there's some stuff I got to read, okay? So for our favorite way to light up, go to thefreezepipe.com today and enjoy awesome deals going on from now until April 20th. We're talking pipes, bubblers, bongs, dab rigs, vape pens, and joint chillers. No, and Sean, eat your heart out. Look at this. No matter your style, there's a chili freeze pipe for you. Three main pieces. The Shop Ooh, now at thefreezepipe.com, and if you see something you like that's not on sale, Ryan, use code TYSO look at that. for 10% off your entire order. Look at this, dude. This. That's thefreezepipe.com, and use code TYSO for 10% off your entire order. And we're back. Is that your father, or is that that's that leprechaun? The leprechaun, <laughs> yeah. So I want to ask questions that are going to be Stuff that you have answered probably many, many times. Okay. And I want to ask you these questions. Steve Carell was great. My favorite episode was The Injury, where Dwight gets a concussion and Michael burns his foot in the George Foreman grill. And my favorite cold open is actually the one that your dad mentioned about where my uh, my desk gets moved into the bathroom. What's the cold open for that one? It's where, not the fire? Where my desk gets moved into the oh, bathroom. Oh, that is the cold that open. The That's cold not the open. story, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not going to be as... Uh, uh, office heavy 
as a okay. series, but it is going to be about your life with it. Okay. And first, I want to give a shout out to Allison Jones, who who has gotten me more work than any of my reps all put together for anybody I've ever had. Right? She's amazing. She's amazing. And also, she... Uh, Can I tell you my Allison Jones story? Please. So for those who don't know, she cast The Office. She cast all the Judd Apatow films. She's cast so many great Golden comedies. Golden Girls, Fresh Prince, Vi uh, Super Bad. Curb your enthusiasm. Veep. Yeah, she's uh, been. It's she's been doing it. Yeah, at uh, the highest level for the longest. I'll, time. I'll never forget my first audition for Allison Jones. She was casting an independent film. You could tell she was not that into. And I went in to read with her, and she was reading, and I had my things, and and I was actually pretty good and pretty funny. And she was like, people were coming in, and she was reading, and she. I'll never forget the look on her face. She read with me, and she was kind of like, like, and you could see it, like, oh shit, he's actually. <laughs> He's actually kind of good and funny. And then she started reading with me. And then I was on the list. And then she brought me in for everything after that. That's, that's it's like, yeah. yeah. When people like, like, how do you, how do you, what do you do? What's, what do I do in showbiz? How do you get in? Everybody has their list of whatever the thing is. You get on Allison Jones list. That's, that's the thing to get on. And because when she likes you, I mean, she would, she just brought, brought me in a lot. And yeah. she's brought me in for things I didn't get, but it was always like I went in for Veep and I got to read with Julie Louise Dreyfus, you know, and like I got to read with Judd Apatow and she just brings you in. I got to audition multiple times with Larry. She she just brings you in. She like is a champion. And I, it's, di I didn't get to read for Judd Apatow, Veep or Julia Louise Dreyfus. Well, or... they, they were looking for a different look. They were looking for somebody who- Do you wash these things? I used to during COVID days. I don't anymore. And I've thought about replacing them. So all of the, this is like so germy with all the guests. Uh, I turn it toward the thing and I open to, to get natural sunlight on it. But if it bothers you, I think you're joking, but if it bothers you, I could use wipes or something on it. No, it's all right. Does it bother you? I could get wipes right now. Let me get wipes. No, it doesn't bother me. I don't think wipes would work, but I'm really okay with it. Oh, I would put them I was just thinking about all of the people because I've watched a bunch of your podcasts and all of the people sitting here. Doing, I think about I've, doing weird raps about and it. stuff like that. Yeah. Know, just, just say raps, but weird raps. Raps. No, they're weird raps. They're not normal raps. Okay. Do you think that what you do on your podcast is normal raps? A normal How many of those raps are weed induced? Do you rap better when you're on an edible? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Yeah. However, I am in the mood to rap more when I'm high. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. I, Rick. Uh, Rick. Rick. Richard, do you mind if I call you Richard? Don't do it. Um, where were we going? Allison so Jones. I just, Allison Jones, but yeah. I wanted to get into the, the, the beginning from, from casting into like the life of, a, it, it's curb and office. And I think everybody will agree. Those are the those are the the best the best of the best, and not only were you on it, you were it. I mean, you were the the, the big four, and you. I mean, some of the biggest laughs I've ever had on television are because of you. I'm actually like feeling emotional right now. <laughs> like, wow. Um, like uh, I do this podcast a bit, and you have people on that are it's cool, it's cool. You know, I've done it enough to where like, oh, it's just another person. They're a human being who does an art. Um, yeah. but like just thinking about like what you've done and like what you've done for me and the moments that I put that show on when I'm so sad and so lonely and like it fixes it for a moment, but it fixes it. And it reminds me that even though it's that moment, it's just for a moment. This is also, this negativity is also just that moment. And just, just now it hit me that like you're on my couch, the couch that I've watched this so many, so many times. Um, but I want to, yeah. So anyway, I want to get into what it meant to you as far as from beginning to end. And my first question about it is um, when you audition with Allison, I've seen your audition. You know, those are, those are out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. tons of auditions of like yeah. really big people who didn't get these roles. Right. Allison told me that, that, uh, that she was attracted to the idea of it being people that people don't really know who they are yet. Mm -hmm. And, um, when you book that, you don't know what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. When do you? Like, when are you on a thing? Is it because you NBC says the numbers are good? Like, because the first season wasn't. Yeah, it was. 
there's a lot to unpack there. Thank you for your kind words. And I really appreciate that. And that has been one of the greatest honors of my life is being on a show that we did because we just wanted to make something funny and we wanted to like buy a house and mm -hmm. have a nice job, you know, and not be unemployed. And the fact that it has touched so many people's hearts, that's not something we factored into the office, how much meaning and solace it has brought such a large population. So I'm just really honored to hear that from you and from so many people that the show meant that much to them. Like I really sincerely like, I had no idea and um, it's so awesome. How awesome is that? I don't know. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I imagine you, you're, you. Because it's, here's, here's what's hard. Um, having any kind of, uh, getting on a TV show in any capacity and even saying a handful of lines, really, really hard to do. Yeah. Getting a, a, a larger role or a lead role, even harder. Getting onto a TV pilot, even harder. And then having the pilot picked up and then having the pilot go to By series. Role at first you meant like even like a big guest star yeah, role. Yeah, big guest yeah. star role. And then uh, and having the pilot picked up and then having having it go for 200 episodes and then having it be really good. There's a lot of shows that go for 200 episodes and aren't good, like Yes, Dear or something like that. I don't like to talk about other shows, but. Uh, yeah, it's okay. I don't think anyone will even remember that show. When I was auditioning for The Office, Yes, Dear was the number one show on television. People don't even remember that it, it was a show. Right. Um. So, and then it's good. And then, not only that, 200 episodes and it's good, but then, then Richard, the fact that it also is so meaningful to people, that is an incredible, it's a roll of the dice. I'm honored. I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed. I, I literally, the office ended 10 or 11 years ago and I still can't believe my good fortune to be a part of it. It's, I found it after after it ended. I mean, yeah. to, to the point of yeah. like it, how it's When it was it's on, shelf Netflix, life. on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah, when it first was on Netflix. That's, it, we had a much larger, more people were watching it like, two and a half years after it ended on Netflix than ever watched it while it was on Yeah, like NBC. we just happened to Suits recently. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I guess it's the access to it too. Like it's also when it came out, there wasn't this binging streaming uh, mentality and uh, having that show uh, start another episode. I mean, you're, yeah. just, you're gonna watch it until you yeah. go to bed. Yeah, absolutely. But to answer your question, so we all went out for lunch. We were shooting, Who's I think, the pilot. Me, Steve, John, and Jenna. And just the four of you guys? Just the four of us. I had a tuna sandwich. It was this little diner down in Culver City. Big tuna. And um, nice callback. And then Steve said, just think of it. This show could be the thing that that we're most remembered for. This could this show could change our lives. If we do things right, and I can't believe how prescient he was. And Steve, he's been nominated for an Oscar. He's a huge movie star. He's done all kinds of amazing roles in his career. But at the end of the day, he really is kind of Michael Scott. And I'm going to be Dwight Schrute at the end of the day. And uh, so that first season, no one watched, got really bad reviews. And this guy named Kevin Riley, who's still in the TV business, he championed the show and he got us on the next seat. And he, he, he was able to cobble together because we were a really cheap show to shoot and our salaries were not that high. And he cobbled together like a six episode order for the second season. And then- No, and then, first season was six. Yeah, first was six, but hold on, because I'm not done. Sorry. So it was six episodes for the second season. We're like, oh, this sucks. And then and then he's like, okay, we're able to we're, we're able to do two more. And like, okay, great. Get, oh, really? The, the writer's going, and then like, okay, they can do one more. And so we'd always get these updates and some writer would walk in, Mindy or Paul Lieberstein or whatever, and be like, hey, we got another order. looks like we're gonna do nine this season. I'm like, yes. Is this while it's and airing then, too? And it, yeah, it just was starting airing and we were kind of snowballing. And then uh, there's a bunch of things that happened during that winter of the second season. Rugbine season. Rug buying season. RBS. We uh, <laughs> during during the RBS of two thousand. I believe this would be six, maybe seven. Uh, the um, we hit some home run episodes, like the Halloween episode and the Christmas episode. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two. 
video iPod players came out that winter for Christmas. No joke. Remember those? Mm -hmm. The iPod with the little video screen? Preloaded onto them. I don't know how they swung this. Oh, really? Was the Office Christmas episode. I know this is a break in momentum and not relevant, but have you seen the movie Pop Star? No. Oh, well, they did a bit because U2 was on people's iPhones and nobody asked for it. Yeah, yeah. They did a bit where their stuff was going into people's refrigerators, the music on it. It was just yeah. made me think of that. Interesting that they they forced it on people. But they liked it of back course, that's then. that's what I'm saying. That's where yeah. it, it would be, a, it and works. And who got video iPod players? Well, ki- young young folk, college and high school students w- with money. And they watched The Office and they loved it and they started watching it on the TV. They started don- downloading it from the Apple mm-hmm. store. And all of a sudden we were like the number one, two, three, four, and five show on the Apple charts, even though we were the, like the number right. 47 show on the TV charts. And then we were like monitoring all of this. And every week when the show would air, we would there was a number you could call to find the, the there was a phone number to find the Nielsen mm-hmm. numbers of the show from the, the the fast rating numbers. And we would call, it's like, oh, it's 1.30 on so a- People listen, there's, there's two numbers you get. There's how many people watch it. It's in the millions, you know, between 1 million and 10 million yeah. or whatever. And then there's also the demographics, which is the young people, the uh, right. whatever, 18 right. to 35 or something. Right. And the percentage. It's also a percentage of what, a percentage of all TVs on, what percentage of them yeah. were watching the show. Wild that that's still how things are done, by the way. And- uh, we would call and like, oh, it went up 0.1%. Uh-huh. Oh, that, that's good. And Isn't that, that good? you because now maybe we'll keep doing more. Yeah, and then we would get like two more. And all of a sudden we were up to like 11 or 13 episodes in season two. And then I don't know why. I don't know how this happened or why. No one talked to us about it. There was an office billboard in Burbank above the NBC offices. It just appeared one day and it was just there. And we someone brought in a picture. I think it was even before picture phones from like on their digital camera. And they're like, you guys, look. We were like, our jaws dropped. And they printed it out from the digital camera and they stuck the picture up on the wall. And it was me, BJ, John, Jenna, Steve, that really early season one, sitting at a conference room table with really bad lighting. And it was, you know, push pinned to the wall and it stayed there for nine years. Well, what, the writer's room? It, no, just outside where we shot. Like if you were going out of the break room and out mm-hmm. out there and then you were out uh, out of the set, it was it was. Where there. was it? The Where was the Burbank thing? No, where was it that you guys filmed? We shot out in, way out in the valley, in the middle of the valley. Yeah. So all of a sudden, and we like, and it was like this huge release, like, ah, uh, like, we made, what, it. we made it. We made it. We're going to be on. We're not going to be unemployed. My wife and I bought a house like immediately. From season two? Like literally like the billboard. My wife and I bought a house. Man, times are different. Hi, why? I'm I, going into my, I'm filming my fifth season. Of, and you of still television. live in this shithole. Well, you know, it's, you know, it's the, the interest rates are pretty high. Oh. But I'm not. And that's the mistake. Yeah, that Flip was that. a big mistake. So you see a billboard and you think that's it? That's enough? Yeah. Yeah. But also remember, this was the the age of net of network television. Uh-huh. And then um uh we were doing twenty two episodes a year too. Yeah. So that's not like doing a Netflix show and like, oh, we're doing eight this yeah. season, you know. Also, so. um, you were getting residuals. You're yes. not anymore, are you? Yeah, a little do bit, you? a little bit, but not like the original residuals when they would do replay, you know, replay episodes are and like syndication. Some kind of numbers. You don't have to talk about yours personally, but like around what these things are. Back in the day when things were syndicated, wasn't it like an episode fee when it aired? Yeah. Like if the, when they re re air an episode, you get yeah. paid the same amount for an episode. Yeah. That ain't the case anymore. No, no, not not at all. Yeah, if a re airing was the same rate and. Uh, a syndication was still a very high rate. Which for people guessing, I don't know, but for a show like that back then, your rate would be on the, unless you're a big star on the low end, 15 to 20,000. Uh, if you're not a huge star, but you're you know a big part of it, between probably 50, 70 would yeah. be my guess. Yeah, yeah right uh, in that range. When it airs again, 
that again. Per episode, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Season two, episode one, uh, Dundies, to me, from there, I liked uh, season one, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's not the same show. Mm-hmm. Um, from there, it's a smash. Mm. And mm. to have that in your second season, but it's interesting. You didn't know. You thought you only had six. Like I'm watching. This is this is the greatest show of all time already. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, we get one more. We get two more. Are you feeling people talk to you about like the thing you said? You have so many people come up to you, talk to you, what the show means to them. Yeah. Did when does that happen? That can't happen that early. No, that didn't happen for quite a while. Maybe um, when DVDs come out or something. When did that start happening? That's an excellent question. No one's ever asked me that before, actually. When did the first person say, you don't understand that show means so much to me? I think it's like season five or six when someone was like, hey, just so you know, like my parents are getting a divorce and me and my brother, we would watch The Office and it meant so. Every Thursday we would gather and I would hear from some people like, we could never agree, our whole family could never agree on anything to watch, but we would watch The Office together. So, you know, Grandpa and Uncle Chuck Bob and me and little Sally Sally Lou would all sit down and we'd watch The Office together. So bringing people together since 2006. Um, season five, uh, The Duel, directed by Dean Holland, who works on uh, you okay? uh, yeah, my love, show. Love Dean, yes. And... Um, uh, What's he the dean of? Terrible joke. Dad joke. Do you want me to take it out? Or do you want people to see that? Keep, keep it in and s- let people see that I'm being self-deprecating and you know what, kind we'll of humble. We'll bleep it, but we'll keep the audio in. So we know people- um, Keep the whole goddamn thing we'll in it. Bleep and keep it in. We know what we're doing here. You said people, some, first time somebody came up and said, you don't understand what this show means to me. I'm sure at the first few times you didn't understand. Um, now you do. You said, well, you can understand. I, I haven't, I haven't, I don't understand what that is. Is there a way that you could explain not empathizing with the people that it, like me, that it means something to, but how do you accept and believe how much you mean to other people with all the humility that you have? Like not, it, it, I, I don't even want to give an example of what I'm saying. Does the question make sense? No. Okay. Let me give a great example. Perfect example. If somebody were to tell a beautiful person they're beautiful, if somebody were to tell LeBron James he's so great at basketball, he could- <laughs> LeBron, you are so good at basketball. <laughs> yeah, LeBron's gonna send you so <laughs> much <I> Chipotle. <laughs> here's, a, here's an example that I could give. People, when they meet my parents, um, my parents are unbelievably funny and everybody's parents are special and they feel their own way. I just cannot accept and believe that I just feel I'm the lucky, I, they're the funniest, most loving, supportive parents. When people meet my parents and they say, you're so lucky, I love your parents. I say, thank you sometimes. Your dad's cheating on, on your mom. Um, Bleep it. Gold, gold, but gold, also gold. you could leave the audio. I say, I say thank you, but sometimes I also say, I know. Because it's not my, it's not a compliment to me necessarily, even right. though it is. Yeah. Do you know what I'm That's saying? That's the honest response. Yeah. Like I, like, I, I'd be like, thank you. But I know, like I feel the same. The office was such a great show. It meant so much to me. I, I know. Right. But, I bet it does. But, but you being, you making it like the show isn't the show without you. So you being such a big part of it. I mean, is there a confidence? Is there a, uh, what does that what does it mean? What does that feel like? I I don't know what it's like to mean something to somebody through art like that. I don't know how to answer that question. Um I will say that um I had been an actor for at least 14 or 15 years before I got the office. I got out of acting school when I was 22, 23 and had been acting nonstop and played Dozens and dozens of roles in theater, uh, uh, in in television, a couple in film, mm-hmm. and um, it's it's kind of like th- this is going to sound. I hope it doesn't sound arrogant, but it's kind of like, oh, my whole life prepared me for this because of course. this role came along, and I, as soon as like, as soon as I saw the British series, and I was like, oh my god, this is so. Did you brilliant. know before you auditioned? 
Yes. And then when I saw some of the script of what they had for, for Dwight, I was like, this is me. There's like literally Give no examples, one. please. Well, um, uh, there was something about your, the, the monologue that Dwight has about urine and it's in the, it's in those bloop audition bloopers. It's something about urine is sterile mm -hmm. and I use it to wash my wounds or something like that. Urine is sterile. Okay. And I was just like, I know exactly how to say that line. No one can say that line better than me. I know exactly the character that would say that line. And there's not, there wasn't any kind of arrogance. It just, it was like that. It's like Barry Bonds stepping up and like, I'm going to hit a four run shot over the left field fence right now. And, and he does that. And I, and so I, I felt like my whole, in a weird way, my whole life was preparing me to play Dwight Schrute. All the, the comedy I'd done, the, the clowning stuff that I'd done in acting school, the various characters that I'd played just prepared me for that to kind of like walk in and, uh, and, and hit a home run with a part. So God bless the broken road who led me straight to you. Do you know that? I love is that Elton John. He's probably saying it. Yeah. Yeah. He probably it's Rascal Flats, but I'm sure he, I would love dude. Oh my gosh. Do you know Elton? You heard of him? I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would love to hear his. Do you want him on the pod? Wouldn't mind it. He goes by Sir Elton. Do you want to hear what the lyric is? Because it's beautiful. Yes. Um, are you okay if I sing it? I'm not a singer. I'd like you to rap it. I, this this is not to be. Come rapped. on, please. I'll try. Every long lost dream. But are you also listening to the words while you do that? Are you going to be distracted? Every long lost dream. Okay. Led me to where you are. Others who broke your heart. They were like northern stars. Leading me on my way. Into my lover's arms. This much I know is true. That God bless the broken, broken road that led, led me straight, straight to you. Yeah, we can uh, we can put Keep subtitles all through that whole section. But just oons, 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 or you know, your yeah, just a yours. drum beat. Yeah, I did a television show called As We See It, and there was a scene that involves something with urine, and the line in it was about how it's not. It's unhygienic. It's not sterile. It's something, whatever it is. Hmm. And I, the actor, not the character, had a conversation with the powers that be saying, nope, urine is sterile. I don't know if urine is sterile. It could be. It could not be. But I said it because of that. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, that must yeah. be the case. It was, yeah. you know, it was on a TV show. Yeah. And I have since uh, people message me sometimes, you know, urine isn't really sterile. And I, the truth is, I don't know. And I haven't looked it up. And I won't. But do you know? Let's not look it up. Yeah. I always thought urine was sterile, and I said that line, but I thought it before that line. But then some people are like, it's not really sterile. So you've but gotten this too. I've gotten the exact same thing. What's the, what's the big deal? Yeah. I guess some, maybe some people. Gandhi drank it. Well, Gandhi did a lot of things. He did a lot of things. Yeah. Some of it, not so good. Yeah. I don't want YouTube to, to flag it. Can I say that? Yeah. Homosexual? What, what should I say? Gandhi, I don't think he was a homosexual. No, no. Which I'm just would saying, have been fine, which would be totally fine if he was, but I don't think he was. I think he what was. What are you saying? I think Gandhi was gay. I think he like... I'm pretty sure Gandhi was gay. I'm more confident Gandhi was gay than I am P is sterile. How, okay. How Native American. How big is oh. this pod in India? Not very big. And I thought about doing episodes and having somebody dub them all. I'll do it for this one. Let's do it. I'm going to do it for this Let's one. Let's do it. Will you help uh, pay for that? Yes. I've got a lot of money. Yeah? Mm-hmm. <sighs> when you get older, you start to grunt when you make <laughs> yeah, I've heard. uncomfortable moves. You How much cash mean? do you like to keep on you? I like to keep uh, I like to keep a fair amount of cash just for getting around town money. I've only got uh, 38 bucks. Which is interesting, which is one more than the age you were maybe when you did the pilot of The that Office. That is really good. That's really good. I've also got a check here. I did a voiceover for a documentary 
for here's eleven hundred fifty eight dollars, uh, and um, I'll sign it over to you. You know, I actually forgot I have this. I have a collection of things, uh, I, from a while ago where. I, people start writing me checks for certain things, you know, as they do. Yeah. And some of them were like really famous people for stuff that happened. There's coincidentally this person, this person, my basketball team, someone here. I met this person. They whatever. Well, you have checks from famous people. So I ended up having a, a collection. I forgot I have this of it's basically autographs, but it's from checks written to me. Like there was one one where I rented. I forgot what it was. From but, who? What, 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 what? George Clooney? Who? Are no, you not about? like that. Well, there was one from Nick Kroll. I rented. I, I was about to rent a movie of his, and I, and I tweeted him. I said, "Hey, I'll buy it if you pay for half." And he said, "Okay." And but I got a check from him. Uh, I have a check from uh, Adam Devine. I have a check uh, from Workaholics, Lamorne Morris, New Girl, Kristen Bell from um, the Kristen Bell Love documentary. Her. Love her. Okay. Um, yeah. I have a few more. I'm not remembering who, but I have like this odd awesome. collection of autographs. I would love yeah. to have that check from you. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank do you. you. Think, do you think $1,100 will cover the cost of uh, dubbing it into Hindi? I'll cover the rest. Do you want to? Do you want it dubbed or subtitled? Dubbed. It, it would dubbed. be very funny dubbed. I thought about spending money to dub some of the podcasts I have into like whatever obscure languages, not U obscure, yeah. Uzbeki, something like that, Mongolian. I, I, no, you could be huge in Mongolia. You could be the could number be. one comedy podcast in Mongolia. I was thinking more like some of the big ones, Hindi. Okay, you know, Spanish. Lame. Yeah. Um, I think it's really funny English, to spend like the money. London. It's really funny to spend the money uh, in like Lithuanian. Yeah, I could do Lithuania. I know yeah. some Lithuanians. Do you? No. What about if I did this and I also had British people just do it, but in their voice? <laughs> I got a question. If I if you if, had an English, will an you English match this rank? for this episode? Yeah. Five grand each, maybe 20 grand each. No. Maybe five grand for me, 15 from you? <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to just take care of the whole 20? What nope. does it cost? I don't even know what it would cost. I also have more questions I'm I want to ask. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a pee break. Great. I'll you fill up my water. You don't have any like iced tea or like tea. Or I anything. have organic lemonade. Do you have any tea or iced tea? You know, you know what I have? You brought up, uh, uh, they sponsored me before. What, what was it? Who's the water one? Liquid, liquid death. death. Yeah, I think that I have some. I think they have an Arnold Palmer. I think they call it like an armless Palmer or something. I, I would totally have that. You want ice because it's warm. I would love an ice with that. Win, win, win. Let me check you. I'm gonna be in your sink again, just like like last time. If that's okay. Sure. Let me check you. Man, the sound of ice. I guess the cracks already happened, but the sound of ice being poured, something crisp. Man, what a refreshing sound. There's simply nothing more refreshing than a good pour. No artificial flavors, no added preservatives, no added colors. I had some uh, asparagus for dinner. I can tell. So there's a little bit, uh, it's, it's just a little bit of that acrid asparagus pee going on in there. So yeah, be careful. I don't use that bathroom. That's my fragrance, by the way, asparagus pee. Really? It's only available at Walmart. That's that's a big, that's a big distributor. It's a big Do you mind? distributor. I can't hear you really. You said what? That's a big distributor. Yeah. It is. Yeah. They have a, yeah. You know, Kevin O'Leary says that 86% uh, of all wine bought in this country is under the price point of $12 a bottle. Gold, gold, so you can think about all gold, these high-end wines gold, that you gold, have, and sure thing, your margins are good, but where's your equilibrium? Where are you reaching the masses efficiently gold, 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 versus gold, gold, being a Prada or a high-end wine like Prada? Prada makes a high-end wine. How is that? Gold, 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 gold. I'm not going to lie. Good. It's okay. Okay. You had the opportunity of getting so much Chipotle gold, 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 and gold, so much gold, gold. Arnold Palmer's, but you're honest. You said before you went to the bathroom that you, uh, you miss comedy. I miss comedy. I do such a serious podcast. 
It's so refreshing to just be able to be funny, 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 fun, fun, funny. There's simply nothing more refreshing than funny, 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 fun, fun, funny, funny. Your podcast is very serious. Yeah, I'm doing a serious podcast. I'm talking about life and death, the meaning of life and hope and social transformation and you know, and I love it. It feeds my soul. I love it. We've 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 banked like fourteen of them and talked to such interesting people. And I, I really feel I'm going to be really honest with you. You know, I talked about uh, Dwight. Like my whole life led up to Dwight. Like part two of that is doing the Soul Boom podcast and having these like deep, rich, meaningful conversations about mental health, the human condition, the meaning of life, and making the world a better place. And I'm, I love it. But I like getting in here and just getting just silly pants with you. Just silly, silly, silly. Where do you do that in your life? I do it with some friends, uh, usually on the phone. Remember, <laughs> remember phone calls? I am on. I make phone calls all the time. I love talking on the phone. Because people don't make phone calls these days. Oh, I, lo I love FaceTime. Yeah, FaceTime is fun. Although it's weird, here's a weird thing. Um, have when have you spent a lot of time in New York City recently? Sure. People walk around all the time FaceTiming without the things. They're just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Bobby. And I haven't noticed that. Oh my god, all the time. Without, yeah. Are you sure they don't have earbuds in? You hear this? How yeah. would they be able to hear? I don't know how. Sometimes they have earbuds. Yeah, sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't have earbuds, and you just you hear the tinny. So <laughs> sometimes I'll like really like crane and look over like I'm trying to see who's on the thing or like wave or something like that. <laughs> That's a great example of the, of like you being aware of how much you mean to people. There's when you do that, you're aware that like there's a good chance that those people may be like, holy shit, is that? Yeah. Is that, do you feel that way? Um, Cause I saw that, that post you did that went viral of somebody was watching the office on a plane next to you, but you were wearing a mask. <laughs> I love doing the serious podcast, but I miss the silly podcast. See what I did there? Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Who's the funniest person you had on your podcast? Neil Brennan. Yeah. Is that a good one? I remember he was doing it right after I was on. I'm not, I, I'm a, I'm a dramatic actor now. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. I do comedy. <laughs> Why not? But I'm a drama guy. Nice. Nice. Um, we talked briefly on your podcast because we talked about uh, being present. We did that at the beginning of here. Um, and I told you this and we didn't get much into this, but um, I'll say Dwight and Michael Scott, I guess, but probably the people that played them, uh, Rain Wilson and Steve, is it? Curl? Carol, Curl, Carol, Steve Carol. Um, I don't know if there. I, I, coincidentally, you guys are on the same show. Kind of like um, how on the Golden State Warriors, two of the best three point shooters of all time happen to be, you know, Clay Thompson is is the second is 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 uh, one of the is second best shooter three point shooter of all time, and he's not even the best on his team. You know, like that type of thing. Coincidentally, there are two of you guys on there. Now, I'm not going to compare myself to the Beatles, but I always think about this in terms yes. of the Beatles, in terms of like, of course, there's Lennon and McCartney. There's also George Harrison, who is still one of the top 10 greatest English songwriters of all time. But you don't think he gets that credit? No. And he happens to be on the Beatles. Right. Come on. Imagine if they also had a drummer that was a great songwriter. I don't think drummers can be good songwriters. Is there a drummer that's good? It's kind of like pitchers Phil can't be Collins? good hitters. Phil Collins? Yeah. I don't know who else. Glenn, Glenn Fright, no, Don Henley. He was, he was a drummer songwriter. I don't know many drummers. I know DeVito is... Uh, is uh, Danny? Uh, Danny DeVito is uh, Billy Joel's drummer. Okay. And um, then there's the guy from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah, he, he Chad drummed. Smith. Of course. He drummed. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I was going to say is what you and Steve did, um, I, there, I couldn't tell when something was improvised 
and I would believe it either way. And the reason I feel that way is because you were both able to at least project that you're thinking about everything that you're doing. I rewind so often, not to see the facial expressions that maybe I could repeat, but for why, but to try to figure out like, what is your intention? What are you thinking? Why did you do that? And that can't be scripted, but also it could be, I mean, of course it could be, but like, I, I couldn't tell. And that's to me, what made me believe so much because you guys were just so tapped in and you talk about being present, being important and like not being on drugs and you being so prepared before you got in the office. Do you think a, your ability to be present, at least as an actor, is a superpower of yours? Like, is that something you rest on? Um, no, sometimes I struggle with it. Um, and I will say that it was a lesson hard learned in acting school for me because I used to be a not very good actor and I used to try and force moments and make them, I, I, was a, I was a tense and muscular actor that didn't really trust myself and I would try and, you know, in acting school, it was, it was very actory and uh, that kind of had to get broken out of me. And um, do you wanna hear a story? Four minutes, four and a half minutes, doesn't involve pot. What's it about? Acting, learning how to act. Okay. Okay. So I'm in acting school at NYU and I do a scene and I had this wonderful acting teacher named Ron Van Lu. Shout out to Ron. And uh, I did a, um, can we can we tag him? Yeah, we I don't will. Know. We'll put it on Instagram. Um, and what is this, he, 1986? Yeah. This was 1988. So um, I, do, I do a scene, I'm bad in the scene. I'm just bad. I'm pushing, I'm sweaty. And I sit there, I'm really depressed because I know it sucked. And Ron, he goes, he's very wise, like an old owl. He's like, Rain, why don't you trust yourself? And I started to weep. I started to cry. Tears rolling down my face. Because <laughs> it's true. I didn't trust myself as an actor. And so I, I got a lot of hugs from people in acting class because people, actors love to hug. And then I hugged you on the sidewalk outside. And then I was like, was that appropriate? Was that okay that I hugged you in that way? I felt you're not really a status. hugger. I felt the pressure to hug you and that if I didn't, I might get fired. Wow. Yeah. I would love to take over this podcast for a couple of episodes. As in you sit here. Yeah. Would you play me? I want to interview like Wiz Khalifa. We'll get in line. But would you be you or would you be me? I would just be me. I would be me with like a, a little trace of Glassman. Like what, you'd have a stomach ache during it or something? <laughs> Your yeah. elbows would hurt or? Yeah, 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 yeah. You would interrupt too much? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, sure. Three Bs, Marori. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, um, you know, if I ever get Wiz Khalifa on here. Will when, you let me? If I ever get Wiz Khalifa on here, I'd like you to do the cold open. Can I do the whole thing? You could sit down there, but no mic. If you, <laughs> if you do it as me gulp, gulp, gulp. and you play me, then yes. Okay, I'll do that. Can I have a wig? Can I have a black curly wig? <laughs> oh my God, that is so awesome. Is this a thing on your show? Is this a regular thing? Um, no, I mean, I've used it before. <laughs> I, I don't know, but the beats and the this and the that is. So Ron Van Loo says to me, he's like, um, I say to him, he goes, I say to him, okay, I'm not gonna push anymore. I'm not gonna force anything. I'm just going to listen and be there and respond. But I said, Ron, is it gonna be really fucking boring? And he goes, bore me, go ahead, bore me. So the scenes I did for the rest of that year in scene study class, this was at NYU, graduate acting, we were there 14 hours a day just doing acting all the time. Um, I literally would do scenes and I would just say my lines and I would just talk to you the way that I'm talking to you right now. And I would just really only listen and respond to what was in the moment 
without any like indication of what I'm feeling or pushing or anything like that. So I did that for months in acting school and people couldn't even hear what I was saying. And I was just on stage. Just that's what I did for months. So in a way, is it my superpower? But it, it was, I, I learned it in a deep way. I learned a deep ability to really be present and listen. And it's amazing that you picked up on that, that that was something that I did. Steve does it. I can't say enough good things about Steve Carell. I mean, as a human being, but I learned so much watching him I work. Bet. He is, I think I'm a very good actor. I think Steve Carell is in that echelon of like the greats. I think like Jackie Gleason, nah, Jackie Gleason, just the ultimate Grady greats. Um, and uh, his ability, you could never throw Steve, you'd be in the middle of a scene and you could start honking like a goose and he would just completely in stride, just take it completely in stride and be like, Dwight, what are you doing? Why are you honking like a goose? Without, without, without a second of like, what's going on? Um, it, it was absolutely astonishing to watch. And his mercurial ability to just create on the fly uh, was, it was, it was incredible. With a, always like, there was always a hooked into an emotion mm -hmm. was there at the same time. It wasn't just bibbly bobbly. I've worked with really good like improvisers before that don't have, uh, uh, now, now do it. No, wrong one. Tweak the statues. Oh my God. All right, this is such a blanketed statement. I mean, there's so many trophies, you know? <sighs> you get what I'm saying though, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, paying attention to what happens I've, and I've using never been it on a podcast before where people are complimenting me so much. It's a little awkward. It's a little weird. I gave and you three compliments, but they were very sincere. I also think there's a lot of bad things about you. I'll put them in the notes. See the liner notes down yeah. below. The first thing will be the way he chews into a microphone. Thank you. Why did you cry when he said you don't trust yourself? Because I can't imagine that would be because of how you feel about yourself as an actor because that wasn't what you were in your formative years. For months and months of months of trying and failing at acting and just not getting it. And I knew I had a lot of talent and I wanted to do it so bad. And I was just bad for a very long time. How would you know your talent? Because there were certain things I could do and hit a home run. It would be an improv or a or, or a, a, a comedy bit or even a role that I would play or something that I would do and I would hit a home run. It was either a home run or like I couldn't, or I would strike out. Like it was, it, yeah. it was great or, or sucky. That's how I felt about stand up for the first 10 plus years. 10 I, years? Uh, I've been doing it now for- uh, 10 years you felt like oh, you were either great or just terrible. It, it took me a long time. Uh, and I say that, um, I say that uh, with data, like looking at my peers, like where people are going and how, how consistent they're going. I thought of it like stand up, like I would sometimes hit the, uh, the get like a Mario star and like yeah. I'm invincible. Yeah. And like, uh, it, yeah, yeah. You grow up. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the yeah mushroom. Okay. And, but with a Mario star where I, I'm, I'm invincible and it's because what I think of as a superpower being so locked into being present that it doesn't matter what you do because at least you're going to be authentic. You're going to be believable. You're going to be saying what you mean, which isn't enough to be an amazing comedian, mm. but it's necessary to be an amazing comedian mm. Mm. and not saying I'm amazing, not saying I'm not good, but I will say that I experienced those things sometimes and I usually didn't. And it was frustrating, but, but I, for some reason thought, ooh, I have something special. Whether I do or I don't, that's what kept me going. It took me so long to figure out figure out how to be consistent. And what I was but doing- But that has to be backed up with the material too. I used to, so I, I would never repeat material, never. Very, very rarely. I did it, it worked. I can't do it again. If I do it again, I did it already. I, I'm lying to you. I did that already. I'm gonna pretend this happened the other day. No, that's, and also that's not what's on my mind now. Something else is on my mind now. Mm -hmm. I've used this analogy on my podcast before, but I, I look at jokes um, as uh, like, as if they're just bricks in the air. And 
We didn't come up with anything. I didn't write. I've never written a joke. I only see it. There's an opportunity for something. Somebody else has said it. Somebody else has that same point of view. It's just, I see it. So I take it and I grab it. And that's, you know, people who are thought of as quick, they could see a lot more bricks than other people. Not Mm. that they're better or worse. Mm. I would see bricks a lot and I see the jokes, good or bad. I see them and you throw them and like Minecraft. I don't play it, but I could visualize that there's, that there's uh, things that you build. How many more video games can we throw into these analogies? Um, seven. Keep going. So you're saying six more or seven more? Shit. Because I, I want to know which one is the more. final fantasy. That's great. Thank you. Well, you deserve a halo. I was just going to say that. What? So kind. Really? I was just going to really? say that's so kind. I put a halo on you. Yeah. I mean, I guess the opposite would be if you go to hell, right? I mean, are you a fan of Diablo? Diablo 1, 2, 3, and 4, yeah. 1 and 2 for me. Diablo 2. Are you being serious? I loved Diablo 2 on the computer in, the, in its day. I I played through all the characters beginning to end. What do you like the most? I, you strike me as a paladin guy. No, I, I, I think this, the, who fires the arrows? There's paladin, there's barbarian, there's sorcerer. Uh-huh. Anybody could have bow and arrow. Gold, gold. I, I was think, obsessed with that. Game. I think I had a barbarian with a bow and arrow. Do you remember the Stone of Jordan's soldiers? They're like the 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 original um uh like the original NFT. They were the because people. I don't know if you remember this or did this. I didn't, but I saw it. People would build up these characters, and then you could sell items like on eBay. Yeah, yeah. And Stone of Jordan was this thing that like was a set price. If you find one of them, they were like twenty bucks or something. I don't know. But I just remember people were buying and selling them on eBay, and I was like, "That's fucking crazy." Yeah, these are that digital. is the original NFT. I That's, hadn't thought yeah. about that. Yeah, That's incredible. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, wait, but we were talking about something before we went on the video game thing. You were doing stand-up, and you were oh, talking yeah. about oh, the, the, uh, bricks. the bricks and picking the bricks. So I would find these bricks, and, and I didn't value the bricks enough because there was an infinite amount of them. Mm-hmm. So I would do it, and I did it. It worked. I don't want to do it again. Mm-hmm. And it took me a long time to learn to, once you get something that works, to keep it. And then mm. like you build a house yeah. out of it. Yeah. And then there's not only the bricks themselves, but learning the order to build it in. And like, I feel like the first 10 years where people were learning their craft on how structure of a set, as opposed to a bit in, in itself, Right. where I, I did not, I'm newer for having done this for, for uh, 16 years. I've only been crafting a set for six years, I feel like. But for that first 10 is where I connected with you like, everything I've done led me to that. Hmm. I feel like I've developed a skill set that is pretty unique to me, which is being able to do any, just my, my, uh, just being fluent in brick, you know, that's, Mm -hmm. that's not enough, Mm -hmm. but like, but that feeling of like, I feel like I'm supposed to be good at this, but I'm not. Yeah. Every now and then, no, no. Every now and then it just comes out. Yeah, yeah, I always yeah. feel like I'm not good, but I will be. And who knows if that's true, but th- that kept me going. Yeah. Is that something you connect to? Like you felt like I know there's something, it's worth doing? Yeah, like I remember doing this exercise in this crazy clown movement class where we had to be different elements. We had to be earth, air, fire, water. And I was like, fire. And I could play fire like nobody's business. I could improvise like fire. I could move like fire. I was just like, oh. like move like Jagger. Oh. And I was just like Mr. Fire guy. And uh, and I was amazing at being, what's happening? Why are you wincing so much? We're gonna animate you on fire in time. Oh, is that what's happening? I didn't know that was happening. You didn't, you didn't tell your guy. He knows. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. So, and people were just like, oh my God, Rain, your fire guy was incredible. And the, the clown teacher was like, I've never seen that. It was amazing. Dude, dude, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's out of context. It sounds like if, if it sounds like you're lying about, and you've never gone to an acting class. <laughs> and you're making up And you're thing. just like, oh, I was like, fire. And everyone's like, wow, your fire's awesome. <laughs> it's like, your fire's so amazing. It's like, I don't think you know what acting class is. I mean, I know that's real, but yeah. it just sounds so made up. It is. It's, if there's a plumber listening right now, he's like, what the fuck? Is that a reference to the, um, the mushroom that I got? Yeah. <laughs> nice. nice. Speaking of fire. Whoa, dude. Did you see that? You get a little, little taste? Yeah. So then I would be like, wow, why would I hit a home run 
as the fire guy. And strike out as earth. Yeah, yeah. And then one time in acting class, I was, re during that time I was really struggling. I was really bad in the scene. And Ron was like, rain is just not working. Um, you know, you know, what, what can you access to kind of break this open? And someone was like, have him play the fire guy. And he's like, what's that? And I'm like, rain was amazing being fire in the who movement class. Who is this class. champion of yours? Be friends with that person still. I know. I can't remember who, but people were shouting that out. And then I was like, so then I did the character as the fire guy. And you were just, you were able to tap into this. Yeah. Character. So I did the lines and the scene, but I was the fire. Yeah. I was the fire guy. And it was good, but then I still couldn't act though. So I knew, you get what I'm saying. I do, but yeah. that, being tapped into something, you're tapped into Dwight. I mean, you you could yeah. you could do if you could do that again, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, are there certain things like I know there's certain genres and certain like mindsets that I could tap into mm -hmm. that like, well, what can I do that's funny? Well, I, I could, you know, arrogant and stupid are kind of easy ones for people to do. Like yeah. you can tap into that because you know what it's like to see people who you think are smart and you know yeah. what it's like to feel stupid. Mm -hmm. What what is Dwight that you tap into? I think uh self serious. And, um, you know, I think he, I worked with this acting coach once, he's a very famous acting coach named Larry Moss. And I only worked with him on one project, but boy, he was so good and he was crazy expensive. But he had this thing about like, how does this character see the world? Like, how do you, how do you see the world? And so for me, it was like getting into Dwight, like, how does Dwight see the world? So to get into Dwight, for me, it was like how he's just in the in the conference room, like, how does he see the world? You know, like, all right, the people are all here. Roll call. Yep, they're all here. He's giving a presentation. Good. I'm going to take some notes and I'm ready at, at a moment's notice to dash out the door in case there's an intruder. And, um, you know, this could be very important. This could take us to the next level. And... So there's that interior monologue. Do you know what I mean? It's it's how he mm -hmm. sees, it's how he sees the world, and out of that, there comes a great deal of comedy. Is there a connection <clears throat> to where you are able to tap so well into Dwight being very serious? And upon your own definition, you refer as much as you miss and like comedy. Your podcast is very serious. Is it easy to be serious? I don't understand that question. They have, they wrote. I am, I am serious in a very different way than Dwight is. D Dwight is hyper serious and kind of self-serious. That's what I'm asking. Is there right. something that, that taps into that where, where like, like you said, you also said um, when you were first trying to be more present and you're like, it'll be boring. Yeah. Okay. And you were very speak a certain way that I'm not saying that's necessarily Dwight, but like you had an exercise of just, being serious, speaking serious. You have a podcast that you're just very serious. Your character was just very serious. The sit, it's funny because you're treating, you're treating low stakes things with high stakes. Hmm. But I, I couldn't play. There's certain characters on the show that I could play. I couldn't do Dwight. You couldn't. I don't know. Mm -mm. Um, I say this both as a compliment to you and also to Why? whatever the show is. Like it was also written a certain way, but like there are some comedians and there are some characters that you see that is the person playing it. And then there's some where it could be somebody else. Um, I couldn't imagine anybody else doing that because what's so funny about what you're doing, you're not saying anything. I mean, sometimes, a lot of times, I guess you are, but m most of the time you're not saying funny things. It's just, is this guy for real? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, how do you, I believe this. We believe this thing that this guy is. And that's what's funny to me. Mm -hmm. You're just such Here's a- Here's who could play Dwight. Jesse Plemons. Do you think I'm texting him or looking up, up who that is? I thought you were calling him. How do you spell Plemons? If he comes on your pod, can I interview him as you with the wig? Sure. He's brilliant. He was in the- why do you think he could play you? He's a brilliant actor. Yeah, he is great. Yeah. You know who I might have on here soon? We've been going back and forth. Who, uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, bloopers is uh, Zach Woods. Yes. 
I'm taking karate classes online. My sense is just... <laughs> You're talking... Silverback. I'm the silverback. You're just a little chimp throwing feces at himself. Yeah, I remember when biceps were all the rage. Uh, Dukakis had just announced his candidacy for governor. <laughs> I think he's one of the funniest people in the world. Zach Woods is incredibly funny. He is incredibly funny. Very kind guy. Should we call him? Sure. Plug this I in. think it's East Coast, though. He's here, I think. Cause he's I gonna... think he's East Coast. Oh, is he here now promoting think, his thing? I think so, because we're, we're going to maybe podcast. Oh, will this, this just work if I press play? Uh, call, don't put it on speaker. Press play. Can you hear that? How does this work? Welcome to take your shoes off. He's not answering and he's not sending it to voicemail. It's the it's the four rings, the four and a half rings that show How me. How would you feel if it Your call four has times? been forwarded to voicemail. The person you're trying to reach is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished you recording, you may flats? hang up. Yeah. Hey, Zach. Uh, hi, it's Rain Wilson. I'm sorry. I know I haven't called you in like 10 years. I'm here with Rick Glassman on his cool, podcast, cool, cool. and we were singing your praises as really one of the funniest people on the planet. And we just wanted to let you know that we really think that you are inhumanly funny. What do you want to say? Do you want to say? If you talk, will it go into the voicemail? I think so. Okay. Zach, could you? Zach, hello? I don't know if you could hear me. Is he saying anything? Zach. Could pick you up. Me? Zach, pick up. Zach. All right. That bit didn't work. I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I guess Jesse Plemons could play you. <laughs> I don't know. I just love I just love when 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 you could watch someone. John C. Riley could have done Dwight. No. Hundred percent. It would have been a different it would have been a completely different character. It would have been an amazing. John C. Riley character. is he would have been so much better He's than a you. Super genius. I, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying it would have been Thank completely you. different. Yeah. Yeah. You said you learned so much watching Steve Carell. Could you actually tell me specific things that I could maybe take from? Uh, really? Mm -hmm. And you could, we could trim this out. I mean, like if you have to think about it, because that's a nugget I would like to uh, put in my pocket. Well, I think I kind of covered that. Mm -mm. You just talked about how talented he is yeah. and how nice he is. You said he has a big schwanz, which I think we took out, but he talked about his penis for like two minutes. And uh, you didn't give anything specific about him being present, his thoughts, his comedic prowess. You said, I could honk like a goose, and he'd be like, hey, why are you a goose? But what am I going to do with that? that? Kinda, that kinda what am covered, I going to do with that? That kind of covers it. All right, hold on. If I'm ever in a scene and somebody honks like a goose, say, hey, why are you being a goose, but have some emotion behind it. I mean, that's not <laughs> that's not giving me anything, baby. <laughs> That's good. Let's talk about something else. Okay. I love Steve, but I don't know how to give you Steve Carell acting lessons. And don't. Let's talk about this. You uh, um, made a lot of money. I did okay. And now you do what, what you want to do as far as what's in your control. Yeah. And you're doing a podcast. Yeah. Why? Because I love having conversations about big, deep, philosophical, spiritual, psychological. We had deep talks. Yeah, I, I just love it. I love it. I've been in therapy for over 20 years. I've been in 12 step for over 20 years. I like getting deep, real, intimate. And, uh, um, and I think it's important. And I like talking about spirituality and no one in Hollywood seems to really be talking about that very much. I have a friend, one of my best friends, and I would say his name, and I don't think he'd have a problem with it, but also maybe he would. Say it, and, and we'll, we can always cut it out. We're bleeping it anyway. Carla Foe? Carla Foe. <laughs> Are you saying careful or Carla Foe? Carla Foe. He is a uh, Christian. Okay. And he goes to church most Sundays. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, loves God. And you guys are friends? He's got a go, go. huge dick. Didn't you kill his lord? No. You're thinking of Pontius Pilate. Oh, right. It's the Romans. I always, yeah. Oh, I have no idea if he's Roman or not. I just know he flies planes. And does not, maybe bleep, 
he does not talk about it. That's why I'm saying bleep. Okay. Um, he thinks people, I say thinks, that sounds almost patronizing like is wrong, but like his, his um, experiences are that people will look at him different. Yeah. And I don't. I mean, you made the joke, why are you friends with him? I know that was a joke, but that's like a thing. Well, you can't be friends with somebody who's... I don't understand that in the same way when I've heard women, and I believe all of them, but they women will say that their experiences are if they make more money than the person they're dating, the person they're dating then doesn't like that. I grew up, my grandpa said, find a rich woman. I said, okay, grandpa. And I've been, I love, I've loved women since, but the same, those, both those things, like I believe feels this way. And I believe women feel, I just don't understand the logic to it. And you just said that people don't talk about that in Hollywood. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, it was very strange. I started talking about kind of spiritual topics. Um, kind of early on in the office, I was on the Oprah Winfrey podcast and super soul sunday show and i started this company called soul pancake that was a youtube channel know that. and uh we made a lot of inspiring it wasn't spirituality but inspiring uplifting content and we didn't shy away from spiritual uh topics and and i do i don't know exactly how it went down but for a lot of people i could tell they were like what the fuck is wrong with this guy. Like in Hollywood, if you're in comedy, you can have like a foot fetish and you can ride a unicycle and you can, you know, collect rocks and you can eat moss and you can do all of this stuff. And you're you like, mean you're acting teacher. You're <laughs> thank Yeah. And you'll, and you'll be embraced, but you're like, I'm a Christian. I go to church and I love Jesus. And you, and the Hollywood doesn't know what to do with that. And then the comedy people on top of Hollywood really, really, really don't know what to do with that. What is it? Is it like we think that if you believe in X, Y, Z, then you just, must be a different I type of person? I think it's just, first of all, Christian's not very funny. And second of all, <laughs> they're not generally. Wait, 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 Christians aren't very funny? Christians are not very funny. That's a very strong take. Yeah. And I don't, I, I don't know. I think I could debate either end of that. There are some funny Christians. Steve Colbert. There's one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but listen, half the cast of The Office went to church every Sunday. They're very funny. So there are a lot of funny Christians. But I just think that the idea of like born again Christians, right. um, uh, Republicans, red state, kind of like it's it's very, very secular in Hollywood and especially in the Republicans comedy Republicans you think aren't funny? Republicans are not funny. Yeah. Strong take. Yeah. Would the would it be for the same reasons? I don't know. Can you think of a funny Republican? I mean, really, think about it. I mean, I mean, they're funny. Like yes. Greg Gutfield is like, he's like, well, that's crazy. These guys are, oh, he's so woke. He's a smoke. Like that's supposed to be like funny or something like that. I don't know the political affiliations of most comedians, to be to be honest, unless they talk politics. I wouldn't, I don't know. Hmm. Okay. But I also feel that both religion and politics, the only times comedians talk about them is if they're making fun of it. Mm -hmm. And it could be about themselves and their family or other people. And I think that's part of spirituality is, is comedians, the comedy folk in Hollywood, you know, are always, they're always doing bits. They're always riffing and they're always mocking. And you have to kind of speak sincerely about God and right. the soul and right. and love when you're talking about spirituality. And that's that's a little bit um, out of their wheelhouse. Have you bumped up against, up against that with any of the comedians you've had on your podcast where it's like they want to go down a certain route and you feel like, do you stop them? Do you feel like they don't go down that route? I've only had two comedians on the podcast, you and Neil Brennan so far. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know why. No, and Bobby Lee, that's three. Yeah. But you guys were all willing to talk about some deep stuff, and it was it was great. Did you talk addiction with Bobby? Yes, I cured him. <laughs> <laughs> he fixed them. He's all better. Yep. I'm excited to watch that episode. I gave him a hot protein injection. You're saying that's that's come. Mm hmm. Yep. Really. If you were to tell people to, if, if they watch this episode after you, you said you have uh, a, a whole bunch in the can, what would, what would be the two to watch? 
Really? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Angela Kinsey, for real. That makes because sense. Because I love her so much. She was like my work wife and on-camera wife for like eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. And we're very close. And sometimes we don't talk for like six months, but when we talk, it's just like, it's like we went to high school together. It's very close. And you know, she, she lives across the street from my best friend. So she lives, we'll bleep it. Cat Carl, Carl Long. Lagenfeld. Carl. <laughs> um, so that's a great one. There's so many good ones. I can't, I can't pick a number two. I'm excited for your uh, podcast. Well then just go pee again. Very good. It's a brick, another brick in the wall. Uh, I'm very excited about your podcast. Yeah. I think that your podcast is going to be one that I, uh, I don't watch too many. Uh, you think you're going to listen to it? Yeah. Watch I think, it? Yeah. When I did your podcast, um, I, I guess his- You were very vulnerable. Compliment number four. You were very scary and scared and vulnerable. My diagnosis, I was so excited. Then I did went through a two year depression. Wow. Because you talk about that. What were you depressed about? What was, felt like a baby. I felt like, I felt like I'm-, I'm Did it make you go back through your yeah. life? Like, oh, yeah. oh, that friendship. That's why the guy never called. Oh, I, I screwed that up or that relationship or mm -hmm. yeah, some regret and remorse as well. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I just want to acknowledge what you might be feeling right now. You don't see yourself the way you see yourself when you get to see yourself. And we're critical of ourselves and we're insecure, etc. And some things are just that, an insecurity. But some things are valid, like, oh, it doesn't matter what people think, just do you. But if everybody thinks this thing about you, take yeah. some accountability. Yeah. This self-love movement is beautiful and necessary, but not at the expense of growth. Pardon me, this is just my take, but I felt you asking questions because you're supposed to. Like, you're on a podcast, I'm there. I felt maybe just because they were written down, maybe I was obviously projecting at least a, a lot, if not completely. But I'm like, oh, you have to ask me questions. You had to find questions to ask me. I felt you asking questions that were like, okay, I, I believe you wrote them, but like somebody could have given them to you. Like, okay, here's a question. And then... There was a question, and every time you asked a question, then once we started talking about it, you were locked. And like, so it felt like you were serious. You felt like you were interested, but also it was very loose. So when you have people on, when you're interested and loose, you let the person opposite you be themselves. It was very easy, probably why I felt so uncomfortable, because it was just like, you're interested in me, I'll keep talking. And it was loose enough to where I don't know where I'm going with stuff. But I feel like um, with your podcast, the audience will be meeting the guest in a very specific way. Mm, mm. And uh, there's so many compliments on this show. Sure. Yeah, there's a lot more woven in there, but thank you. Like how, when I talked about how good you are at fire. Fire. Um, also, we could, we could wrap this up. Fire, I need you to burn. Can we get the rights to that song? Lay that in right here. You know who is the uh, the the white rabbit or whatever the saying is of like the guest that said yes but it hasn't worked out yet who I am so excited to have on yeah is Allison Jones. No kidding. Yeah, that's amazing. You can't reach out to her and ask her until she's been on this. I could call her right now. You want me to call her? She's not going to answer. Probably not. Mm -mm. But she'll email you back within twelve hours. It's nine thirty. Do you have her cell number? Um, I don't remember if we've ever. Called. Is she on the, I think she's not on in LA. Is she in LA now? I don't know. I don't know. Email her. Call her. You want me to call her? You want me to email her? You know, I was funny, offering. You know, call her, I'm saying. I got two numbers for her. I think it's a home and here's mobile. Let me see. Let me see what I, what I text her on. Yeah. Let's uh, ask her why you never got an audition for Curb. I did get a mess. Uh, <laughs> they give it to Larry. She's not going to answer. You are not allowed to make dialed carrier calls. Did you Did you hear that? 
Yeah, it sounded like you were in trouble or something. You are not allowed to make dialed carrier calls? What does that mean? I don't know. Do you want to try the other number? Did she block me? <laughs> Whoa, that's weird. I'm going to text her. Me and what's your name again? Rick Glassman, G-L-A-S-S-M-A-N. I just said, uh, Allison, hi, me and Rick Glassman are here. I tried to call you to get you on his podcast. We love you. That's it. Do you want to send a photo? This is awkward. You know what she she she's the um, she does I would say for me but I'm sure she does for everybody but um, when I audition with her that is uh, not very common um, is I don't feel like I'm auditioning for her I feel like she's helping me audition for whomever I'm auditioning for and like I have done one take and she goes we got it and then I've also done multiple takes and then I left and she called me back she's like could you come back oh wow not because they sent it to producers yeah 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 she's like I think you yeah. can do I can you can do a better one yeah, yeah. yeah. um. I did one, uh, a movie, a David Wayne movie called Futile and Stupid Gesture about the origins of the National Lampoon. Awesome mm, movie. Yeah. And uh, she brought me back multiple times. And after one, she's like, hey, could you get a voice coach? And I'm like, yeah, great idea. I don't, I didn't think to like to get my voice. And I met with a voice coach. She said, come back. I don't want to send this yet. Let's see the other thing. And like, that's what a producer does. You know, like that's what like a manager, I think would do if managers did stuff like that. Yeah. Um. She just knows what the people want, I guess, knows what she could get out of people. And I just, the biggest things I've auditioned for has always been with her and I've never been nervous with her. Mm, mm. She's just, no, mm -hmm. no, no, don't do that. Yeah, uh, I've asked about stuff. She goes, that's not for you. Mm -hmm. It's just like, how cool. My friend Chad Van Landingham redid her kitchen. My dad, uh, Steve Glassman, uh, got her a rug. Right. For her office, not her home. Oh, okay. Do you want to shout out Steve? Hey, he Steve. Does. No, I'm saying like what he does. He, he does kitchens. He does. Chad Van Landingham. He's not, he doesn't do that anymore. I think he like owns children's indoor playgrounds now. Big. It's big, big business. Right now. It's big business. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What else do you want to talk about? I mean, I could talk to you for a while longer, but like we're, we were. Where's your bedroom? Upstairs. Oh, you have stairs? Upstairs. Yeah. Up the stairs. I didn't see stairs, so that's is a surprise to you me that there are stairs. To get here. Oh my god, I did. <laughs> are there more stairs? Is this a tri level? Is it a trimaran? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Can you want to see my bedroom? I would love to see your bedroom. Can we bring the cameras up there? No, I don't show people that. I don't show people that. Yes, sir. and. <laughs> oh, I didn't know what you wanted. <laughs> yes, Each and. Other sentences. I can never guess. I would, I guess I would bring my cameras up there with you. My sheets are, uh, um, uh, when you leave, I'm going to be washing my sheets. I should have a bed. Oh. 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 Let me do the chip shoot. People love the diarrhea. Thank you for all the beverages <laughs> um, and the fruit. It's been wonderful talking with you. And this was probably the deepest exploration of the office and my experience on it that I have ever done, ever done, ever done. Interesting because I have, and uh, I, I would at any moment, it could be a year from now, whenever you're up for it, I'd love to have you back, but um, no sooner than that. But I uh, have, so, I have a, so many questions. I feel like we didn't talk much I'm, about I'm it. Free in, I'm free in February, I could do 2025. February. Oh, a, a year from February. No, yeah, it's no, it's it's eleven months from now. Oh, today's twenty twenty four. Yeah, yeah, I could do that. I can't do the. Uh, it's eleven months. It's not twelve. I could do. Uh, yeah, that's fine. The beginning of February, I can't on because it's my brother's birthday, and then my parents often kind of come into town. Oh, that's nice. Um, so the end of February, I'll put it in my calendar right now. Do you want to do that? Mm -hmm. What do you want to say? February eighteenth. Allison uh, wrote back. Oh, hey, hello. I will do it. I promise. I've been hearing that since February of. 2019. Um, Rick is skeptical. No, I'm not really skeptical. You could say that, but I'm not skeptical. I believe she will. 
I haven't been following up as much as I, I could have. Yeah. Um, February, let's put it in the calendar now. Okay. February. Do you want to pick a day? Valentine's Day. That's perfect. <laughs> really? Yeah. Friday, February 14th. It's a month before Pi Day. Uh, glass with men rain. shoes show. Can we do earlier? So yeah. Do you want to set a time? Um, we could. I mean, we could follow up. I guess in. You want to say November. one o'clock? You want to say like one o'clock? Say one o'clock. Okay. And then follow up in November, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, one o'clock. Uh, I'm blocking one to three on Valentine's Day. Okay. And yeah. I'm gonna take an edible toward the beginning, so it kicks in halfway. We're gonna try it this next time the second time okay great you know this is also um the first time maybe that you've ever done a podcast where we also i'm gonna saw do your dad. i'm gonna do uh fentanyl just a little a microdose of Micro, fentanyl. yeah microdose it yeah will you take an uber here no i'll, I'll be fine no, 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 uber um i'm a good driver so boom now you're doing a plug we're <laughs> three and a half hours i did it at the beginning <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks for having me put up the instagram put up the stuff um theme music i gotta get a polaroid Scoot Say that doo, one this kicked in late but it just kicked in and i want to get silly and i don't know when we're going and how long we're doing we're probably wrapping up soon but i just want to say if you're ever willing to come on my podcast and get silly you're gonna have to take your shoes off i'll take more than my shoes off good can i have my pants off if i do your podcast yeah you wouldn't be the first Oh, you've had other? I've had people with their pants off, their shirt off. We get wild. <laughs> Cut out that look, that last look to the camera. I don't like it. He's poaching my audience. Blubbity blue. Scoot.